Hey, Mark Nelson here, and we have a very special show for you today. Today I'm interviewing Pam Brandt, and she has just an unbelievable story. So without further ado, let's get in on this interview. How, how did you get in that business? Because your, your bio says you are a travel volleyball writer. Yeah, so um, if you read my resume, uh, that's why I don't have one up because it's so diverse. Um, I, I started when I was 16 years old in stand-up comedy, um, moved into banking, worked for First Chicago as a private banker, moved to Citibank, became part of their automation task force and branch auditing. I worked with their security department greatly. And then I went into customs brokerage. Um, I was an international freight forwarder and customs broker. And then I got paralyzed. I actually sneezed, ruptured two discs in my lower back. Oh my gosh. And it paralyzed me from the rib cage down. Um, lost, obviously I had already lost my job. So, um, I didn't have insurance and couldn't afford the physical therapy. So being creative, I started a moving company so I could get my physical therapy in every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that is funny. But I can't believe that. So you were paralyzed from the yeah. rib cage down. Yep. You totally come back or to where you could walk around? Um, I had an amazing surgeon. Okay. Uh, I'm very, I'm, me personally, I'm very faith-based, so I don't, th you know, there is no such thing as coincidence. No. Um, it happened at 6.30 in the morning. I was stubborn and refused to go to the hospital until about two o'clock in the afternoon. When I got there, they were doing a shift change, and the new physician that came on um, told me that I definitely needed surgery, but he was waiting until Monday because they had a brand new surgeon coming on staff that specialized in neurospinal surgery. Hmm. And so I was very blessed with the physician I had. He actually gave me my legs back and gave me the ability to walk. I was on a walker for about four to six years oh my before I actually really gained my strength back, but working the moving business really helped. I bet. Um, so that, you know, with my moving business, I had a friend of mine um, from high school that had his own construction company. So on days that I wasn't moving, I was helping him build things for previous um, clients. And then I had my own cleaning business as well. So I kind of multitasked that moving business into a multi-service business. And then I took a break, uh, went back, to waitressing um, and went back to school for medical. Because of all of the issues I was having, I wanted to understand how the medical industry worked sure. and get and understand the medical terminology that these doctors were throwing at me. Sure. Because <laughs> I didn't know the language. Um, so then I became a medical assistant, certified medical assistant through AAMA and I worked with infectious disease and endocrinology. Um, I just have a passion for helping people. I always have. Um, there's nothing like feeding your soul from making someone else smile. So uh, I, I went into that. And um, then about last year, well, for the last couple of years, I've started having some neurological problems with my legs. And then it also started with my shoulders. Um, and it got to the point where I took a medical leave from work. Um, I'm on long-term disability right now. Was supposed to have a surgery, couldn't have the surgery, and now they're hesitant to have the surgery because after further investigation, they're kind of more concerned that um, the risks outweigh the benefits. So it's just time to just manage it now. I'm sorry. Um, that's okay, because you know everything happens for a reason. I don't, I, 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 you know, I'm I'm on disability, but I don't consider myself disabled. Um, sitting at home, I couldn't. I'm not one to sit still, 
So I went back to, um, I went back to what I do is right. I started journaling and I was like, but this isn't helping anybody. So I decided to go into my community and find small family businesses and find out what their passion is and what they, why they have this business and the history of it and tell their story. And so that's what I do. I don't just write about the business. I write about the people behind the business and what their, their investment is in their company or restaurant or vacation rental, whatever it is. And, um, and, and I get to share their story. And since I have a blog, I can write unlimited words. I can add as many pictures as I want to enhance the visual aspects of, of my storytelling. And I call it an advertorial. Okay. Because it's an advertisement in editorial fashion. Okay. Mom always said, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> So I find the places that, that ignite that passion and you can see that passion for what they do. And those are the people that I connect with and those are the stories I write. That is really amazing because you don't see that all the time. You know, if you pick up the news, all you do is see negative. It's a yeah, the world's, yeah, there's enough of that out there and I refuse to be part of it. Good for you. I did. I looked at your blog, and I, I went through, and, and you have some nice posts there. That that is. Oh, really, thank you. You're helping people. That's kind of that's neat. So you're and, new. And to, before we get going, I want to say this. I and not to get back on this. I'm a colon cancer survivor, and through chemo, I have neuropathy. I have balance issues. Right. And, and I was a college basketball player, and it. I first got mad at it, but then I thought, you know, yeah, I'm proving other people because they're all my friends are watching me and they're, they're, they see I'm not giving up. I kind of stumble, they laugh. And it's like, well, I laugh too, because it's. You have to laugh about it. You know, um, my history, a brief history about my writing. Um, when I was in high school, obviously I'm really funny. Every, I got paid for it. <laughs> um, but I was in Quill and Scroll, which was a creative writing organization through school, a, a creative writing club. I was also in Speech and Debate. Okay. And I got a double ruby in that. Um, went up to the, you know, regional qualified for nationals type of thing. Um, and that was a blast. But a lot of it was writing and research and the way that you present things. Um, and I was very successful at it. I actually had a scholarship to go to Bradley University because of it. Wasn't able to do it. Um, just went to school here locally for a little bit. And then I was doing stand-up comedy and raking in the bucks back in the 80s. That is I didn't think I really needed college. <laughs> you do every, everything you do are, are things that I wouldn't want to do. Because I've always been, I laugh because I, I, I'm on YouTube, I do the podcasts, I do all these videos, but I'm really an introvert. To get up on stage and be a stand-up, I would pee my pants. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's funny because I, I was doing um, local theater, local community theater, and it was between my junior and senior year, and I was doing a, a, um, a show, and we were doing Annie. And I was one of the Boylan sisters and I had a couple of other different roles and um, met up with this group called AHA. And it was led by Eric Brandt. He owns the Chicago Theater now in Valparaiso. And they had this improv group that was actually performing on the main stand-up circuit. So we were like the Drew Carey, uh, whose line is it anyway? But we were doing that back when stand-up was in clubs, and we had, uh, I got to, we were the host improv group at Who's On First in Elmhurst for many years, and uh, just got to travel. I, it was just so much fun. I had so much fun. I remember the first time going, here I am, 16 years old. They come to my house to talk to my mom and dad about 
possibly allowing me to go into the nightclubs and bars to perform with their group because their female was moving on to other things and they really wanted a female in the group and they just thought that my dynamic was right for them. And so <laughs> I, it's, my mom and dad, I call them the cleavers, but they really are. <laughs> and and not many parents would sit there and go, yeah, that's a great idea. Please take my 16 year old to nightclubs and bars. <laughs> oh, that is fun. And put her on stage. <laughs> that is so I had that kind of support. So that's cool. Yeah. And so it was, it was amazing. I was, I, I was 16, 17 years old. Didn't, I didn't really know people as far as, you know, fame and things like that. I remember um, working at the Comedy Cottage in Merrillville, and we were opening for Jay Leno, and him and I were sitting at the bar, and we were talking, and he got a call, and he excused himself, and he came back, and he's like, well, I just got the Doritos commercial, <laughs> <laughs> and that was all before, you know, the Tonight Show and everything, so um, it was just, it was funny, because I didn't really know who he was at the time, Oh, but I think that's one of the reasons why he enjoyed talking to me. Sure. You know, and that's, I'm just, I'm just me. I don't well, care no. who you are. I, you know, I believe everybody has value and everybody has value in different ways. And I don't really care what you think your status is. We're all equal. <laughs> you sound like an amazing person. Well, in all your business adventures and and now you know, we met in a group, in a community. Right. And now you're doing a different thing. You're this volleyball travel writer. Yes. Uh, now, yes. How, how did that come up? Because you, you've done a lot of different things. How did you become a volleyball <laughs> travel writer? Well, my daughter's very active in volleyball. She's very active um, in beach volleyball as well as club volleyball. And one of the things that I saw as a... a a lacking essence in the organization is that these places, these organizations will have these tournaments and they get funding from the communities to bring in all these people from this tournament. Um, I'm located in Michigan City, which is right around the lake from Chicago. Okay. We're about an hour and a half away from Grand Rapids and about 45 minutes from South Bend. So we get people from these three cities coming to this location for volleyball. But the problem is, is that they'll drive in in the morning, they'll play, and then they leave. Okay. So the investment of the community to have these people traveling and, and, and tourism doesn't really pay off because they don't do anything in the community. Right. So as I was as I was on my medical leave, I started interviewing local small businesses and writing these advertorials. And I decided that I was going to call it Volleyball and Sunsets because I want to write about the volleyball organizations and the communities around them. Okay. So that when volleyball players come into a community, they can actually know where to go. They'll sure. know different places to stay and the uniqueness of where those places are. Um, they'll know where to go to eat, where to get healthier foods. You know, if they want a gym or if they want this, they'll know where those things are. If they want to do activities like, you know, kayaking or um, here in Michigan City, we have several boats that offer sunset cruises or fishing, uh, guided fishing tours. You could go out on a boat and go out on Lake Michigan and go fishing for a couple of hours, no cool. you know, just to unwind. So I, I wanted to be able to bring that information into the volleyball organizations and integrate it and then set it up by city. Um, eventually I'll have it set up by state so that no matter where you go, you can find an organization, you can find a tournament, and you're gonna know different places that support the volleyball community. And that brings back the, you know, the, uh, the contribution to the communities that support the volleyball. 
Wow, that sounds amazing because it, it's I, both my kids. I have a son and daughter. They both played basketball. We'd go to these AAU tournaments. We had no clue what to do, and we'd go right. a long ways. And so we'd get to a motel. Right. And go, now where do we go? It's like so we always yeah. were hoping somebody. Would, well, we'd go talk to people. We're, once we'd have like fifteen boys. You know, where are we supposed to go? You know, what yeah. can we do with these kids because they're driving us all nuts? <laughs> right, and you've got to have something for them to do. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I am doing it for for primarily beach volleyball. Okay. Um, because it is one of it is the fastest growing sport in America. It is a huge industry, and there are so many places. Even parks and recreational departments across the country are now starting to put sand courts in their parks. So you don't have to have a beach to play beach volleyball. You just well, need a sand court. You just need a sand okay. court. So I want to find the locations where all of these sand courts are and put it on a national page. Um, I work with the different organizations, like there's an organization in uh, Florida, and they're like, oh, well, we already have somebody that does all of that. I'm like, great. Can we work as an affiliation so that your stuff will show up on my page? And, you know, I can show up on yours. And then that way, these businesses get national recognition, not just local recognition. Because then people from California, if they're coming to Florida for a tournament, they've got all that information. They don't have to look it up on your site. Yeah, they can yeah, go yeah. to my site and my website and all of my stories and advertorials always have a link directly to that business Neat. at the yeah. bottom of the page. So they can always go directly to them. I'm I'm just like the connector. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a movie title. The connector. Yeah, right. <laughs> so now let me ask you this, and I and I'm uh, you are doing a live summit soon? I you... actually just finished it last week. You finished it. Cool. Yes, I just finished it. It was uh, it was a three day summit. Okay. And it was quite phenomenal. I had amazing speakers. I had, uh, oh my goodness, my mind is going blank. I had John Foreman, who is an international coach. Um, he coached everything. He was a co-founder of a large juniors organization, went into college NCAA coaching, went over to the UK and was one of their major coaches over there for their national league. Um, he became a professional coach in Sweden, and we're honored to have him back in the United States coaching up in New York. Okay. And he's written, uh, he also has um, a blog page, and he does, he interviews coaches. Okay. And he writes about, you know, um, their success stories find things that they found didn't work, what makes them a successful coach, how they connect with the with the kids and their different mentalities. So it is kind of like a conglomeration of everything that every that's worked for everybody. And he's got two volumes of it and it's called volleyball um volleyball coaching wizards. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so it was a real honor to have him um, speak in regards to how with the growth of the sport we really need national organization and we need to be able to communicate with other coaches and not be competitive with them exactly by chance you know, was that recorded yes I do have that recording are you going to put like a web page up for that summit or? As soon as I figure out how to do that, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. That's, I, I wish I could help. Um, yeah. I also had, um, I, I also had a couple of pro players um, that talk about, they talked about coaching. They talked about their lifestyle and, and what beach volleyball does for them. Uh, one of them was uh, Zachariah Rabaini, who is a sculptural artist, actually. That's what his major was in school, and he's very successful in his art. In his art. 
Um, but he, back in the day when he was in college and they didn't offer beach volleyball, he was determined to bring it to the forefront. So when he was at school, he actually started the paperwork and the process to get a club for beach volleyball because they actually had courts on in Florida. They actually had the sand courts on campus Cool. And it was just there for fun, but he wanted to actually start a club. Um, by the time everything got pushed through the school and they got the funding from the school to support the club, it was his senior year and they had 165 people show up. Wow. That's awesome. So then, yeah. And so then he moved, so then he was transferring to another school to continue his education did the same thing and set it up there. And then he just started going to all the different colleges in Florida. And before you knew it, he had five different clubs and five different colleges and they started running their own tournaments because they all had so many people doing it. Cool. And, um, and he was really one of the innovators and instigators of pushing beach volleyball into the NCAA. Cool. That is yeah. uh, amazing what you're doing. You're giving this this uh, beach volleyball just an uplift, I believe. It's a, you're, you're well, getting... You know, it, it's one of the things that um, a, a lot of kids play in clubs. Yes. And clubs are great. But I had a real hard time because my daughter was a starter and she would play the whole entire game. And I would be sitting next to a mom who paid just as much as I did for her kid to play, but her kid sat on the bench the whole time. I, I, I remember that. In yeah. A, yeah. I remember that. And, and it's, it's a, it's a, dis, it's a disheartening feeling really, but that's how clubs work. And, you know, every team has to have the backup people. Um, but in beach volleyball, you have two players. So guess what? It doesn't matter whether you're good or not. You're going to have to hit the ball. <laughs> uh, so you get hands on the ball. Yeah. Um, you get, you get, it, it improves your agility. It improves your understanding of the game because you're not just focused on playing one position. You have to play them all right. because it's just you and somebody else. You learn court communication because you have to communicate with your partner in order to work together. Cool. And the best part of it, and the, uh, what I think is the most fun part of it, is that most of them don't allow coaches on the sidelines. So as a kid, when you're playing, you're playing. It develops your own individuality, your own perception of yourself as a player. It develops your self-esteem because when you make a mistake, it's up to you to get yourself out of it. When you make a good play, you have that triumph. You don't have a coach on the sidelines telling you what you're doing wrong or how to correct this every other play. So it makes it, makes it more fun. It just, it brings out a passion in the kids. Oh, Plus you're out in the sun, so you get the vitamin D and it's, you know, it's just a natural high. <laughs> it's, it was amazing to watch in the Olympics. Because the, the Olympic volleyball players are just unbelievable athletes. It's like I was I was recently down in Phoenix and uh, Phoenix, Arizona. They that's where they have the headquarters for uh, the beach volleyball Olympics. That's where they do their training. And I was honored to meet this little girl. Um, her name is Tatum, and. She's 13 years old. She's been in volleyball for almost two years. She meets with a personal trainer. She's got a senior college from one of the leading volleyball colleges there who gives her personal coaching twice a week. She goes to a physical therapy facility and does strength training three times a week. And then she's in club and plays beach volleyball three times a week and then plays in tournaments on the weekends. Man, that's amazing. And this girl, with that kind of grueling schedule, it's so funny because you would see her running suicides and she'd be like, okay, what's next? 
Unbelievable. Who um, smiles about a suicide? <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You know, or or the burpees that they do, and you know all of the the conditioning training. But she is just motivated to get to the next thing to get better because she her direction is her eye on the prize is is being a part of the Olympic team. That is really neat. That neat and she's more. 13 and she has that passion and drive. So it was really awesome to meet her. And when I met with her, um, I, I was, it was suggested that I actually meet one of her coaches that owns RPM Sand in, uh, in Scottsdale. And his name was Ryan Moriano. He's actually was one of the top five men's players in 2006. Um, an amazing man. Cool. Very cool. passion driven. Um, he has a mantra that he just wants to, he wants to inspire people and players like he was inspired by his, he, he always starts with his seventh grade teacher. There you you go. know, yeah. who is his, his phys ed teacher that on their free period, they would go out and play and practice volleyball. And um, to this day, they still have a very, you know, re, a, a real close relationship. And, um, but, but he really, he credits her for fueling his passion and helping him find it. And oh, he's very humble about it. And he just hopes that someday he can inspire someone like he was inspired. And so that's what he drives for. And that's what he does with his organization. And not only does he have um, college coaches and former players coming back to, to be coaching and, and supporting his organization, but he's also got um, Dr. Aphromu on consult and he's a sports psychologist. Uh, from Good to Gold LLC. He's written um, The Champion's Mind, How Athletes Think, Train, and Thrive. Um, so he doesn't just focus on the physical attributes of the sport. He wants to make sure that the kids have the right mind frame. He, he, so he really enforces that positive, you know, influence right. the mindset, that positive mindset is part of his training program. Cool. Yeah, so that was just really awesome. Cool. So where do people go to find your stuff? Where's the best place for them to go find you? You can find me on Facebook or directly through my website. And it's they're both the same, volleyball and sunsets, plural, dot com. Cool. That is really neat. This yeah. has been such an exciting interview. I, I'm, you are going to make a difference in the world. And that's what this uh, podcast can be about. I'm going to put people yeah. up here that are changing people's lives. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if there's any small businesses, um, the one reason that I went to small businesses, too, is because, like, when you're dealing with chambers of commerce and visitors bureaus and things like that, just to become a member of the Chamber of Commerce here is about $400 yeah, that's a, a year. And when you're a family business and you're struggling, especially through COVID, you can't afford those kind of prices. No, so don't. I offer programs and I offer packages um, depending on what the customer needs. But I have some of them that are as little as a dollar a day for $30 a month. You can have your advertorial on my website 24-7, 365 days a year. It goes to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. So it gets the social media exposure as well. Well, and what is that website again? Volleyball and Sunsets. Volleyballandsunsets.com. Correct. Well, Pam, thank you very much. You are an amazing thank individual. You. <laughs> it's a, that, this has been an exciting interview. Wasn't that an amazing interview? Pam has such a great heart. And all she wants to do is serve people. So please head over to her site, volleyball and sunsets.com and join Pamela. Hey, I would love it if you go give me a review about on this podcast. 